As investors in the UK, you've got quite a few different choices when it comes to investing your money. And I know when I started, I had no idea what to choose from. So in this video, I wanted to go through two of the most popular types of accounts, explain exactly how they work, what they allow you to do, and most importantly, whether you should choose one or the other. I don't think this is an easy choice to make, but let's work this through together and I'll give you my thoughts as we go on. Let's start with ISAs. This sounds simple, but there are actually four different types of ISA accounts that you can use. You have the cash ISA, a stocks and shares ISA, an innovative finance ISA, and also a lifetime ISA. As if personal finance wasn't complicated enough, but anyway. Now, before diving into the details, the main thing you need to know is that each tax year, you can put in up to 20,000 pounds of cash across these accounts. There's also a junior ISA that you can open for your kids, by the way, and this has a limit of 9,000 pounds per tax year. That's separate though, so it doesn't have anything to do with your £20,000 limit. You can mix and match those amounts, but it can't go above £20,000 in total for the money that you put in. There is also a caveat here when it comes to the lifetime ISA, which has a £4,000 limit per tax year. But let's run through a very quick example to see what this might look like. Say you were lucky enough to have £20,000 of cash to invest, you could use it in your ISA accounts like this. £5,000 into a cash ISA, £10,000 into a stocks and shares ISA, £4,000 into a lifetime ISA and £1,000 into an innovative finance ISA. Or you can stick the whole £20,000 into a stocks and shares ISA or a cash ISA. It really is up to you. Now the biggest benefit to any of these accounts is that you won't pay taxes on any of the gains that you make through interest, dividends or capital gains. If you get lucky and invest £20,000 into a company in a stocks and shares ISA and that becomes worth a million pounds in a few years time, then that money is all yours with nothing more to pay. Likewise, if you also do this in a cash ISA, there's no worries about any interest gained here too. Just quickly on the lifetime ISA, this is an account which is specifically for two different use cases. If you're buying a house or saving for retirement, this could be a useful option, as you actually get a top up of 25% of what you put in, which can be up to £1,000 free if you max it out with a £4,000 investment. This would take your account up to £5,000 a year and you can do this until you're 50 years old, so long as you open the account before you are 40. Now, remember what I just said about the two use cases? This account is really useful for buying your first house as you're getting a 25% boost to your savings, but also you could use it as a retirement account as you do get access to it after 60 years old. But if you try to access it early for any other reason, you will be faced with penalties of 25%, so probably not worth doing that. So quick summary of these ISA accounts then. Everything you put in has already been taxed, so there's nothing left to pay once you use them. There's no limit what you can make from them. And there are now quite a few ISA millionaires in the UK as the years go by and the stock markets continue to do well. Also, the £20,000 a year limit is way more generous than other countries. And 95% of people will never even get close to this. Oh, and one more thing to note, it's a use it or lose it. If you do have some cash lying around and forget to put it into an ISA account in one tax year, you can't go back and use that allowance in the last one. So if you did have £30,000 sat around and it was March, you'd be best putting in as much as you can before the new tax year in April to give yourself no worries about having to use other kinds of accounts. Nice problems to have, but always worth a thought. And speaking of other kinds of accounts, let's dive into the world of SIPs or self-invested personal pensions. This is just another kind of investing account and as the name suggests it's all about giving you an account for your pension which means that this is money for later on in life and you can't take it out until you reach the right age and just on that point unless you're already taking money out the minimum age is rising to 57 from april 2028 and this could be raised higher by the time many of us actually get around to retiring ourselves so on a positive note this should mean that we've got a long time to build up some money but we can't touch it until then. Now, a SIP is a pretty powerful account, but it can get a little bit more complicated, so just bear with me. I won't cover every single little detail, but I'm sure some people in the comments section will help us out if there's anything worth adding. So with a SIP, money you put into it gets a tax relief up front, and the best way to show you this would be a quick example. So let's say you put in £100 into a SIP. Once that money's inside the account, you'll get a top up of £25, which takes your account to £125. £25 works out to be 20% of £125, and this is the same as the income tax rate for someone paying the basic rate of tax. So effectively, any money you put into your SIP gets your income tax refunded if you earn anywhere in the basic rate of tax, which is 90% of people in the UK. The basic rate of tax, remember, is anywhere between £12,570 and £50,270 per year in the current tax year. You'll get that top up in around 6 to 11 weeks, according to most providers, so it will take a bit of time to come through, 
but this will be done automatically for you by your SIP provider. Where things get complicated or more interesting is if you're a higher rate or an additional rate taxpayer. You also get a further tax benefit by being able to claim even more tax relief through your self-assessment. And this might mean 20% or even 25% more tax relief depending on how much you earn. To show you a good example, I've taken this table from Interactive Investors website. It shows you how much a £1,000 investment into a SIP account would actually look like and how much tax relief you can expect depending on the level of taxpayer that you are. As you can see, a regular taxpayer and even a non-taxpayer get £250 topped up on their £1,000 investment. But things get interesting once you pay more tax as you can claim back between 20 and 25% of tax once you fall into these tax brackets. So based on their tables here, you can see what a contribution of £1,000 into a SIP might actually cost you in real terms. Clearly, a SIP is a powerful tool once you start earning a lot of money in your job. And also don't forget that you could even reduce your tax bill and stop yourself falling into an additional rate of tax if you pay into a pension at work or a SIP. Now, don't all get your tiny violins out at the same time, but if you do earn over 100K a year, don't forget that you'll start to lose all of your tax-free allowances and every two pounds earned removes one pound of your allowances. This means that if you earn 125,140 pounds or more, your effective tax rate becomes 60%. So this could be a good point to start contributing a lot more to a pension or a SIP, but I'll leave that with you and your accountant to sort out as I'm not a financial advisor. In terms of limits, SIPs let you put in up to 60,000 pounds per tax year, which is a huge sum of money, but this is only possible up to 100% of the value of your income. If you earn 35k a year, you can only put in 35k into your pensions. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, well, how can you live on no money if all of it goes into a pension? But that's not the point. Imagine the scenario where you have a lump sum of cash. It might be a bonus from work, a sale of a home, or even an inheritance. You decide you want to invest that into a SIP, and there's where the limits come in. You can't just put in 100k into a pension if you earn 35k as income. You only could put in 35k for that tax year that's the total of your income. Now, there is a huge detail that often gets left out with these style of videos. With a SIP, you can go back up to three tax years. So if you did have 100K from a sale of a house today, you could put in 30K in each tax year going back three years. But also, don't forget to take into account any company pensions you might have as well, as this is also part of the total allowance you can invest. Now you can see how these things get complicated. But anyway, I hope you get some of the basic points. Then final thing to say on SIPs, just before we move on to a bit of a comparison, is that they are taxed on the way out, unlike the ISAs that we spoke about, which aren't taxed at all when you finally want to start taking money out. You do get 25% as a tax-free amount, but the rest will be liable to your normal rate of income tax. Now, there's loads of clever ways to take money out, and you don't have to take all the tax-free cash out at once, and you can still keep investing during this time as well. You also have the option to buy an annuity as well, which is a guaranteed income for life. Now, I don't want to go into too many of those details here because otherwise the video will get too long. And super high earners can't just keep claiming forever. There is a limit which tapers down your allowance once you earn that super money. No need to feel sorry for them, but for every two pounds of income above 260,000 pounds, the annual amount they can pay into a pension is cut by one pound down to a minimum of 10,000 pounds sad times. If you want a video on any more details on SIPs as a deep dive, then let me know in the comments below if there's enough interest, I'll go ahead and get that one done. But trying to keep this one as simple as possible for the time being. Now, it's time to compare the two because at the moment I've given you loads of details and you might be a little bit lost. So let's actually do some real world examples and see how much impact that extra tax relief might have during a long term investor's life. Okay, let's run two scenarios. Two people putting in £200 a month, one into a stocks and shares ISA and the other person using a SIP. If they both invest for 30 years and get a return of 6% a year, which should allow for a bit of inflation as well, they'll end up looking something a bit like this. Our ISA investor has £196,000, all tax-free, but our SIP investor has £245,000, as he was contributing his £200, but it got topped up, which made his investment £250 a month. Now, don't forget, as I said earlier, the SIP investor has 25% of this tax-free, but will need to pay tax on the rest as he draws that down however he chooses. You could do this loads of different ways, but you could take all of your tax-free cash now, or even just take 10% of it each year to last you 10 years while the rest of your investments still grow. That would be all up to you as in a completely personal decision. Now, clearly, the SIP investor has a bit more money because compound interest has worked its magic over the long term when you add a bit more money. He will have tax to pay, but let's say that in this example, that our investor only ever stays in the basic rate of income tax during his retirement. That rate is 20%. 
and 20% of the taxable part left only comes out to 36.8k in total. So even if you take this part out, the SIP investor has still won. Hopefully I can show you on screen now what this looks like because I realise that I might be losing some people with all of these numbers. Sorry about that, but I promise you that if you do take your time, it will eventually click. So what's best? Well, look, first off, you don't have to choose. This isn't a one or the other thing, and you can have both accounts open at the same time in your life. I think that it becomes especially useful once you start to earn a lot of money as well, as things really start to get interesting once you're able to claim back tax relief and max out those allowances. But that only really applies to a very small number of people. The benefit of the ISIS to me is their flexibility, as you can access your money anytime, excluding the lifetime ISA, obviously, and you never know when you might want to access them. You could want to buy a home, go traveling for a bit, or just get access to your money. But SIPs only allow this once you reach late into your 50s. So if you're using a SIP, you really have to be committed to the process and know that this money can only be for retirement. And on that note too, I think this could be a really useful account if you get itchy fingers. Because a SIP doesn't let you have access to the cash, you're almost forced to become a long-term investor rather than get scared out of the market and sell everything. An ISA is really good because it's flexible, like a stocks and shares ISA for example, but it also becomes an issue if you invest for a short while and then sell out once things get difficult. If you know that you can't sell and have to stick it out, then you're way less likely to make bad short-term emotional decisions. Now, one thing I haven't really mentioned earlier here, which is worth saying, is that SIP, I think, is a really useful to bring in old workplace pensions that you might have lying around from other providers. With a SIP, you can manage all of your money yourself, probably save a boatload in fees, and also decide exactly what you want to invest in. I actually did this myself a couple of years ago now, and I'm really glad that I did. I moved all of my old workplace pensions into a SIP on my Vanguard account, so all of my money's in one place. I bet many of you out there have loads of pension accounts which aren't doing anything, because they were set up when you used to work for a company that you're no longer with. So you might get the odd letter in the post each year giving you an update as a reminder, or you might have moved house and totally forgot about them. But honestly, give yourself a kick up the bum and get it sorted and you'll thank yourself later. And on that note, don't forget that I keep the links to my favorite platforms in the description below, mostly for ISIS, but SIPs are on the way at some point and you can get yourself some free cash or shares for signing up. So finally then, let me hand it over to you. Get that conversation going in the comments section. Is there anything I've left out you might want to throw into this? Would you choose one or the other? Or have I just confused you so much that you've got no idea what day of the week it is? I'll see you in the next video. Happy investing.